You are listening to Senior Moments with your co-hosts, CC and Millie. Today we are talking about the subject that affects many of us in the black community. We're going to talk about living with diabetes. I'd like to start the show off with a quote. The quote I have is by Stella Patton. The quote that Stella is saying is that words have power. Don't give this disease any more permission to ransack your body by claiming that it belongs to the disease. Say something more positive like, I have diabetes, but I'm working on it. Another quote that I found with, in keeping with all of the, the research that has come up is, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. And believe it or not, this quote was by Hippocrates. Millie? Uh, living with diabetes. Um, My Me, living with diabetes. Um, you have diabe diabetes. This means that there is too much sugar in your blood. And you may not have enough hormones called insulin. And insulin is the key that unlocks your body cells to let blood sugar in and give you energy and if insulin is missing or not working right blood sugar builds up type 1 diabetes is usually diagnosed before the age of 20 if you have type 1 diabetes your body can no longer make insulin and type 2 diabetes is usually start after 40 age of 40 but young people can get it too it's often it's linked to being overweighted your body may still make insulin but your cells resist its effect or you can cannot make enough insulin so um when you look at type 1 and type 2 diabetes, then uh, and, 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 um, you can also be type 1 when you in, take an insulin also. And that's for the, on, in the booklet. Uh, staying healthy, diabetes never goes away. It's going to be there. Uh, you just can uh, work with it, prevent uh, you from having high sugar. You can work on, like CC said, you, you have to eat healthy and you have to test your sugar regularly and take your medication and also exercise. All those things work together when you have having diabetes. When you uh, test, you have to have a meter uh, that and a strip and also they have something new coming out I can't explain that one because I don't know much about it is uh, a meter that uh, you have something on your arm or something and it'll check your meter without stick you doing your stick without pricking your fingers yes and so uh, that has been the hardest thing for me because I am a diabetic and sticking your fingers every day more than one time a day it's it's hard but you have you need to do it you need to do it to know what what level your sugar is and that way uh you can help with your organs and 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 that diabetes do affect your body it affects all your organs in your body when um you don't test you overeat and um, 
you need to know what your sugar level is. And uh, to control it, uh, make sure you eat the right foods. And I won't say the right food, it's the amount of food. And, and, and yeah, the right food too. But the reason I say that is when you uh, eat uh, cake, candy, those are not the right foods to eat, but you can still eat it. It just, you got to eat it in moderation. I mean, real, because sugar is, is, is very hard to uh, guess. So you have to test to know what your sugar level is. So when you get ready to eat, like you eat breakfast, uh, you test before. You, I mean, that's what I do. Everybody's not the same. Some people test after breakfast and some people test before breakfast. I always test when I get up in the morning just to see how my day going to go. Because if you wet, test in the morning and your sugar is 200, then you know that you're going to have to be very careful eating all day long because your sugar is already up. And so uh, you have to make sure you take your medicine and eat even a smaller amount of food uh, so your sugar level can go down and exercise. And I found out that exercise is just as important as medicine, your medicine you take. Because uh, when you exercise, that keeps your sugar level down also. And I don't, that's something really hard for me to do is exercise. But once if I see that my sugar is up, I will exercise and it and it get it back in order. So uh, I won't say you do like me. You should exercise every day. So Cece, you have anything? You know, one thing that I was astonished to hear is um, the, the, this quote by Hippocrates: "Let food be your medicine, and medicine be your food," because they do have um, medicines for diabetes. But more and more, they're finding out. I don't know if you're familiar with this picture, um, the Big Fat uh, Truth. And mm -hmm. on this picture, this guy is a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And he has these diets for people. And uh, some of the people that were diabetics on this diet, mm -hmm. they were able to reduce the amount of medicine they take. And in some cases, get completely off their diabetic medicine mm -hmm. because they were eating uh, strictly, now it wasn't any meat, a strictly vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. And so when I think of hypocrisy, I mean, uh, 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 hypo hypocrisy, and I want to say hypocrisy, mm -hmm. uh, I think of him saying way back in the Greek days, way back, mm -hmm. you know, before Christ's days, mm -hmm. to say this, it, it makes you know that the medicine is good, and I'm not saying no one should ever not take their medicine, but as you stressed in what you were saying, mm -hmm. to um, eat a balanced diet, and mm -hmm. a balanced diet is, you know, the sugar, not sugar, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be careful of the sugar, but exactly. to eat a balanced diet of, of mm -hmm. fruit and vegetables and meat, mm -hmm. and and the key is the fruit, vegetables, and meat, and, and, and diabetes is a disease in which the body does not respond to the hormone insulin is impaired, and it can result result in increased levels of glucose in the blood and mm -hmm. in the urine. Mm -hmm. And so the one thing that I see is diabetes ravages the black community. Mm -hmm. and, and it hasn't been determined if it's because the diet is poor or because the access to health care is poor. You know what I found out to be? What's that? Is, well, in our family, I won't say, uh, we ate a lot of food. We now, for me, I knew I, I would ha uh, diabetes run rapidly in my family. Okay. So I always tried to stay away from a lot of sweets. But I sit down and ate big plates of food. That was, that was my mistake. And that was our mistake. We used to eat a lot of food and try to stay away from sweet because we thought sweets was the one that's going to make you be a diabetic. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not true. It's it's the portions of food you sit down and eat, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You have to be real careful because your sugar level, because if I'm going to sit there and eat a big steak, mashed potatoes, uh, gravy on the mashed potatoes, and bread and butter. Yeah, bread, all that. See, that is one thing that you have to watch out for because if you're going to eat 
a six ounce steak, maybe you need to eat a two ounce steak okay. instead of, you know, that was what I found out to be my problem. So it's also it's, the amount. It's the amount that I was eating because I, when I, uh, you know, when we have family dinners, you sit there, you want to unfasten your pants, I done ate all this food, I'm so full and this, well, see. Then we, you go back and eat some more. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 and see, that was the wrong thing to do. If you was going to not eat sugar, you might as well have because you was eating so much of everything else. And so, and then you had the starchy food. See, didn't think about the starch is just as bad as the sugar. Right. And so, yeah. You know, one thing that I had found that I was really surprised to find out that, uh, you know, everybody talks about eating too much salt. Uh-huh. And, yes. and salt is not the best to eat in excess. That's but right. the sugar is just as bad. Yes. And I never I never realized that until, until recently. And, and, and then after I become a diabetic, then I found out about your kidney, your liver, your heart, your eyes, all of these things is very important because if you overeat, you killing all your organs. And I didn't know that you sit there and just eat, 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 and then you look up, your kidneys is not functioning, your liver not functioning, your eyes, you blind, and you blurry. And so it's, it's, it's work, it's sugar works on you. And blood sugar is also uh, blood glucose. That's what they call it. And your goal is to keep your blood sugar as close as possible to normal. Well, I, that's, that's kind of what I was uh, saying, that, you know, you, you have to know when you are testing, like when uh, you test and uh, before breakfast, your sugar should be 90 to 130. It shouldn't be any higher than that. Okay. But... I wish okay, can I ask you, uh, I, I, and, and this I don't know, but when I had my A1C test, which uh -huh. I'm thinking is a test that they give you, yes. um, always when I get these test results from the doctor, I always go down and look up every item, mm -hmm. um, especially I, I, I hone in on the ones that are below, above or below normal, mm -hmm. and my A1C was, was one, and the doctor told me that I really need to be careful. And, uh, I, you know, I was really surprised to hear him say that because, yeah. you know, I thought one I'm was. I'm surprised, too. One was because not bad. Because they don't, they really don't talk to you. Uh, and and just this year, it changed. Well, six is six points mm -hmm. is what your sugar, you don't even have to be on medication. That's when they start warning you. Okay. So, one, I don't know where they come from. I, I, I'm I don't not either. sure. You know, sometimes I think. I don't know. And, and but, this is just me. Sometimes when you go to the doctor, I think they're in such a hurry to put you on medication that, you know, they, they say things to maybe make you mm -hmm. worry. And so I'm not saying that all doctors are bad, but I'm saying that you need to, with everything that's available to us on the Internet and everything, you need to research for yourself so that you can, you can see for yourself. And see, I have not uh, read uh, lately uh, the last time I went to the doctor the diabetes associate had lowered the number so i don't know if it's six anymore i don't know what they lowered it to but uh you can if you are a one and he had given gave you some medicine do you know where they would have found you laying out on the floor somewhere okay. because if your sugar is not low and you're taking medicine and make it lower then your sugar can be too low and okay. it, you'll pass out, you okay. know. And so that's how some people find out uh, when they said they are diabetic and the doctor give them medication and that have happened to people before. Okay. And so uh, I, I, I don't know, you can't say you, not to do what the doctor tell you, but I guess you have to research yes. sometime just to see when they first put you on this medication see what the association have your points you know what i'm saying i do you look it up I and do. and see what the points are in compared to what they have on your oh yeah that's testing. what i always do when they yeah. when they give me these blood tests i always ask can i get a copy of these results mm -hmm. and everything that's above or below the norm I research it further right. to see exactly what the norm is and, mm -hmm. and, and maybe try to determine for myself some things I should do. Just because yes. as we get older, 
I, I keep going back to this um, uh, quote by uh, Hippo, Hippo, I keep saying hypocrisies, but this German medical doctor from before Christ, and mm -hmm. he said, let food be your medicine mm -hmm. and medicine be your food. It, 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 and then when I looked at the picture, the vegetarian on television, the big fat truth, he brought down their uh, A1C levels mm -hmm. just with being on a vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know that if it's something that is pertaining to whether you can live or die mm -hmm. or be blind mm -hmm. or, you know, because diabetes is a very serious disease. It is, it and is. as I keep saying, it ravages the, the black community. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and I keep repeating, I don't know if it's because there is a, a lack of medical care or if... A, not knowing. Not knowing. Not no. knowing and not going to see. Right. And uh, the uh, H1... The A1C. A1C. Uh, they, when you're a diabetic, they're supposed to check your A1C every three months just to see that keep you in line with what it's supposed to be and uh and when you uh you learn how to use your your uh, meter and your strips and you know uh with the cost of your prescription and things now your meter don't cost that much you can get a cheap meter but your strips are the one that costs so much it can cost a hundred and some dollars and it depends on your insurance. Your insurance may pay for them and may not. And thank God I'm not on insulin because they said the insulin medication is extremely high now. And if you don't have insurance, you can't even afford it. Oh, wow. And so um, it's, it's in, and then uh, it's very hard to test people that It'd be good if someone was here to explain how, when you're on insulin, mm -hmm. they have to test regularly and eat. And I noticed that I have friends that are on insulin. They gain a lot of weight. And that's because they are on insulin. Then they have to eat the food to uh, keep the, your sugar up because insulin lowered, you know. Okay. So they have a rough time. That's why I fight so hard, and that's why I eat like I do. And being on a on the fast have really helped me to get that in balance. I have been eating uh, less food and uh, eating correctly, okay. <laughs> and that have helped me a lot. And so, when I get off the fast, I'm going to try to stick closer to what the way I've been eating than go back to the way I was eating because I thought I was doing okay before I went on fast until I found out about this fast, you know, and um, I... D Can I ask you, was the fast a strictly a vegetarian? No, it wasn't. Okay. Okay. No, because I eat, I eat the chicken and I eat seafood okay. and fish. And I can eat turkey, but I haven't did turkey this time. But I have... So... I have not been losing weight like I did that first time. That first time I lost like 15 pounds and I oh, didn't need to, you. Oh, okay. you know. So, okay. I, and it's not that I'm trying to lose weight, it's just that you eat, you know, correctly and try to. Now see, I have a friend that is diabetic mm -hmm. and she's not overweight, but I think she's on like an 800 calorie a day diet and I'm thinking, ugh. But the one thing that I noticed that she does have, she really, she exercises and everything. Uh -huh. The one thing that I noticed that she does have is problems with her sight. And yes. so uh, she yes. really does eat, eat right. And the one thing that I have started doing, it's not in my immediate family, mm -hmm. but in, in relatives and cousins, they're diabetic. So uh, one thing I have to say is we're genetically predisposed towards diabetes. And so um, the one thing that I have started doing is, I, I, I would like to be a vegetarian, let me say that, uh -huh, but uh -huh. I, it just it just doesn't work for me. <laughs> but I have cut out a lot of steaks and uh -huh. and burgers, and so I really eat, I try to really eat healthy. I eat um, I, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I do a lot of smoothies. I cut right, back on sugar, yes. and I drink a uh -huh. lot of water. Yes, and that's one thing that um, our diet call for is not a lot of sweets and not a lot of junk. Mm -hmm. You eat healthier and you eat right and that's really a balanced uh way to eat and stop eating stuff that's going to harm you 
and especially when you're already where I am, like a diabe- like I'm a diabetic, so you really need to do that uh, right. So we're going to go and take a break, and we will be back. This is KUAW, Kansas City Global Community Radio Station. And we are back, and I want to mention that today um, they are having Aretha Franklin uh, service. Well, maybe not service, having her at the Charles H. Wright Museum uh, of America. African American history in Detroit, Michigan. That is where they have her body and all the people, anyone that wanted to visit her body, they can and they have her uh, there for the August the 28th and 29th and then they will have a private funeral for the, the family uh, on the 31st at, at her church and uh, and I just wanted to mention that because she is the queen of soul. You want to say anything? You know, I I commend Aretha Franklin for the life that she lived and for the music that she gave oh, us. Yes. That just, I mean, who can forget respect? R-E-S-P-E-C-T, oh my, we used to just snap our fingers. Mm-hmm. And, and one other person, you know, that we need to really give a shout out to yes. is John McCain. Mm-hmm. I didn't agree with his political point of view, but I agree with the fact that he was a decent human being that stood up for what he says. And he was a uh, 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 service. He uh, went to the uh, Vietnam, Vietnam and got captured and everything. So he was a good spirit person that he worked across the aisles. You know, he didn't just think about um, the Republican. He thought about everybody. everybody. And I was impressed when he wouldn't leave. He mm-hmm. had an opportunity to leave. Right. And he wouldn't leave just because his, his father was an admiral. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't leave and leave the other people behind. He came home with them. Yes. And, and so I, I, I commend him. I also thought about the time when the lady came up to him when he was running for president. Yes, and I said did she too. just didn't. She didn't think about, she didn't like uh, Obama. Obama because mm-hmm. he was a Muslim. Is that mm-hmm. what she called him? She called him a, 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 a Muslim or mm-hmm. something she called mm-hmm. him. And, and John McCain stopped her and said, no, he's a decent family man. Mm-hmm. And he just let her know that he was a decent man, but they just had de- different, different political points of view. Right. And so I, I want to commend him, too, because a great American has died mm-hmm. with, with him John McCain right. and the Queen of Soul is gone. Yes, with Aretha Franklin. Right, exactly. And you know, um, uh, and you have to put hate behind you. Yes, you cannot hate people. And and well, I'm gonna leave that alone because we don't have but another minute. <laughs> and I'm gonna do uh, spiritual moments. And I'm gonna read from Matthew's 13 and one. 
through. I'll let you know that. The day, the same day when Jesus out of the house and said and sat by the seaside and the great multitude was gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore and he spake many things unto them in parables saying behold a sore went forth to sow and when he sowed some seed fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them some fell upon stony place where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth and when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away and some fell among thorn and the thorn sprung up and choked them but others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit so and some and hundredfold some sixtyfold and thirtyfold who has ears to hear let them hear that was Matthews 13 1 through 9 and this has been KUAW Kansas City Global Radio Station and thank you for listening to Senior Moment with CC and Millie